Cocoa is a natural fibre that acts like a peat fibre in the way that it binds and releases nutrients. But also like an inert substrate such as rock wool in the way that it holds water. However, the characteristics of cocoa are very different to that of peat, which makes it a very unique product. Cocoa substrate can act as a buffer by storing nutrients and water for the plants. Buffering can work in several ways. There are water buffers, pH buffers, nutrient buffers and the cocoa buffers. So what's the difference? Let's start with the water buffer. Rock wool can hold about 92% of its volume in water. This water supply is there for the plant as and when it needs it and it's called a water buffer. Cocoa can act as a water buffer as well, although it cannot hold as much water as rock wool. The water held by the cocoa is readily available to the plant. Then we have the pH buffer. Potting mix is made from acidic peat, and because of this acidity, lime is added to bring it to the right pH value. If you water the plant with a nutrient solution with a high or low pH, the lime buffer will neutralize it, at least until the lime in the peat runs out. So, Potting mixes can help to neutralise any mistakes made by the grower. Cocoa is basically neutral in its pH value and will not neutralise the pH value of the nutrient solution. This means that pH values are easier to control in cocoa, but it is not as forgiving as potting mixes. Then we have the nutrient buffer. Substrates containing peat or mineral soil combine nutrients to the fibres or particles using charged sites, known as cation exchange sites. The nutrients will later be released into the solution around the fibres in the soil. This mechanism is called slow release or equilibrium. All elements can be made available for the plant in a specific ratio. Cocoa has similar spaces between its fibres, but these are already filled with the potassium and sodium. This sodium and excess potassium needs to be removed by washing the cocoa thoroughly with clean low EC water. This treatment should be done by the supplier, making cocoa substrates from cocoa fibres. Finally, we have the cocoa buffer. As mentioned, cocoa fibres also hold potassium. This needs to be removed by adding calcium and magnesium. If this does not happen, the fibre will draw calcium and magnesium out of the nutrient solution, so that it is no longer available for the plant. Although the cocoa is buffered, it will always bind some calcium and magnesium from the nutrient solution, and thereby release potassium. The cocoa substrate uses the potassium that is released for the generative phase as well. Since the can of cocoa substrate absorbs enough water and doesn't need to be watered that much, there is plenty of time for the cocoa to make this exchange. <laughs>